ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम पैव नरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्ट प्रायशो भद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवती ऋतम श्लोक भक्ति नैष्णी ओम ज्ञानतिनांद से ज्ञानाजन शलाखय तत्चुन्मी मेन तस्म श्री गुरव नम नमो विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्तिवेदात स्वामी नमने नमस्ते सारस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदादर शिवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे अस्याव भगवान् वेद गुह्यतम शिव देव शीर्नारद साक्षा भगवान् कपिलो नृप O King Lord Shiva, Narada, the sage amongst the demigods, and Kapila, the incarnation of Godhead, all know very confidentially about his glories through direct contact. And so, Bhishma Dev has been glorifying Supreme Lord Krishna. So, no. previous verse he said, "Esha." Why Bhagwan Esha? This Krishna, this Krishna is that inconceivable original person of Godhead. Now we're saying that Shiva, Narada, Kapila, all know very confidentially about his glories through direct contact. Pure devotees of the Lord are all Buddhas or persons who know the glories of the Lord in different transcendental loving services. As the Lord has innumerable expansions of His plenary form, there are innumerable pure devotees of the Lord who are engaged in the exchange of service of different humors. Humor means what? What is the meaning of humor? Rasa, Prabhu Ji. Rasa, yeah. Yes. So, innumerable pure devotees who are engaged in exchange of service of different rasas. Ordinarily, there are twelve great devotees of the Lord, namely Brahma, Narada, Shiva, Kumara, Kapila, Manu, Pralada, Bhishma, Janaka, Shukadeva, Bali, Vyasaki, Yamaraj. Twelve Mahajans, Prabhu. Twelve Mahajans, yes. So there are twelve Mahajans, of which Bhishma Dev is one of them. Bhishma Dev, all the one of them. Has mentioned only three important names of the twelve who know the glories of the Lord. Pila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur, one of the great acharyas in the modern age, explains that Anubhava or the glory of the Lord is first appreciated by the devotee in ecstasy, manifesting the symptoms of perspiring, trembling, weeping, bodily symptoms, etc., which are further enhanced by study and understanding of the glories of the Lord. Such different understandings of bhavas are exchanged between Yashoda and the Lord, finding the Lord by ropes, and in the chariot driving by the Lord, in the exchange of love with Arjuna. <coughs> These glories of the Lord are exhibited in His being subordinated before His devotees, and that is another feature of the glories of the Lord. Okay, so let's try to understand this. So this much is clear. Pure devotees of the Lord, uh, they know the glories of the Lord in different transcendental loving services. So there are different uh, relations based on different expansions, uh, etc. So there are different rasas. Ordinarily, there are twelve Mahajanas. Bhishma Dev is all the one among them. He is mentioned only three important names. So he talked about Shiva. 
നാരദ ആൻഡ് കപില വിശ്വനാഥ് ചക്രവർത്തി ഠാക്കൂർ വൺ ഓഫ് ദി ഗ്രേറ്റ് ആചാര്യസ് ഇൻ ദ മോഡേൺ ഏജ് എക്സ്പ്ലെയിൻ ദട്ട് അനുഭാവ സോ ദിസ് അനുഭാവ സാത്വികി ഭാവ സ്ഥായി ഭാവ ആൻഡ് വിഭാവ സോ ദീസ് വി ഹാവ് ടു സ്റ്റഡി ഇൻ ഭക്തി രസം സിന്ധു ഇറ്റ്സ് എ വെരി ഡീപ് ടോപ്പിക് സോ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഫസ്റ്റ് അപ്രീഷിയേറ്റഡ് ബൈ ദ ഡിവോട്ടി ഇൻ എക്സ്പ്രസി manifesting the symptoms of perspiring trembling weeping bodily eruptions etc and so it is ex- ex- appreciated in bhava first and where there are some initial symptoms of prema and these are further enhanced by steady understanding of the glories of the lord now these glories of the lord is not uh, the general glories of the lord this these glories here are actually Uh, in that particular rasa <coughs> in which the devotee wants to serve the lord he will uh, the, this bhava this bhava is further enhanced hmm? that, that is called anubhava right so um see in this uh, maybe sometime we have to discuss bhakti rasam to sindhu so the way this works is there is an object of attraction which is krishna hmm? and then everything about krishna becomes uh, reasons for further attraction to krishna right it could be krishna's name form pastimes qualities everything become reasons for further attraction to krishna hmm? so these all work together in uh, influencing each other in terms of <laughs> experiences as in um there are there are like for example devotee um uh, one second let me open this now if it is possible uh, Hmm. One second. ഓക്കെ okay so here is bhakti rasam to sindhu sai baba taking on a relishable nature on being nourished in an amazing manner through hearing and other actions becomes bhakti rasa by means of the anubhavas vibhavas tatvika bhavas and vyabichari bhavas <laughs> so sai baba is uh, what we can think of as our constitutional rasa right that bhava becomes rasa how meaning that bhava becomes intensified to become rasa by means of these anubhavas vibhava satvika bhavas and vibhichari bhavas no uh let me see if i have <laughs> <laughs> Mm. 
<clears throat> okay, maybe you're not defined it yet. Yeah, so Anubhavas generally we can say are these are emotions <laughs> which are not so intense are called Anubhavas and <laughs> Oh, exactly at class time, my cough starts. One second, I'm going to come back. <laughs> so anyway, we'll go into maybe more detail uh, when we do Bhakti Rasa Amrita Sindhu, if we at all do. But <clears throat> we should understand this Bhakti Rasa is... Um, <clears throat> Uh, sthai bhava becomes bhakti rasa by means of these anubhavas, vibhava, sattvika bhavas and vipichari bhavas. So we'll discuss this in more detail at some point of time. But right now, what uh, Prabhupada is saying is that here the anubhava uh, is the glory of the Lord. <coughs> <coughs> this anubhava <coughs> Um, is first appreciated by devotee in ecstasy, right? Which means the, when the devotee is in the stage of bhava, he first appreciates the glory of the Lord and that steadily gets enhanced by further understanding of the Lord. Okay, and such different understanding of bhavas are exchanged between Yashoda and the Lord. Now, what is this further understanding? By actually seeing the interaction between the Lord and his devotee. This, this is the different understanding. So, this is called Rasa Tattva. <clears throat> right? So, when we are trying to understand actually uh, the interaction between the Lord and His devotee, the understanding or further understanding of the glories of the Lord happens. Uh, mm, these glories of the Lord are exhibited in His being subordinated before His devotees and that is another feature of the glories of the Lord. So, <clears throat> because the, in the stage of prema, Krishna is subordinated to the devotee. So when we study these different uh, exchanges, the, our understanding of the glories of the Lord increases. And this is the reason why we have to read Srimad Bhagavatam. <clears throat> because Srimad Bhagavatam um, actually helps us understand the different rasas. Uh, so only by this understanding can we actually become pick or we will even know what is our constitutional position. Hmm. Shukadev Goswami and Kumaras, although situated in the transcendental position, became converted by another feature of Bhava and turned into pure devotees of the Lord. So they were in the transcendental position, which is Brahma Bhuta, Brahman state, but they became converted by another feature of Bhava and turned into pure devotees of the Lord. <laughs> Uh, tribulations imposed upon the devotees by the Lord constitute another exchange of transcendental bhava between the Lord and the devotees. So basically, this is what Prabhupada is explaining, saying that when we read Srimad Bhagavatam and how Lord is uh, interacting with his different devotees are all different aspects of this Anubhava, glory of the Lord. Right? And when we actually get into the de depths of these we will actually start appreciating the relationship, right? The rasa. That is why Prabhupada is saying it is first appreciated in this stage. Before that, we cannot appreciate. Before that, we will simply hear these as, as knowledge. <coughs> right? Oh, okay, yeah, Krishna is great. You know, he's become the charioteer of Arjuna. Okay. We, we understand that. Uh, but we will not understand the love or the exchange, the relationship, underlying feelings in that particular exchange. That is why, you know, actually, Shila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, that is why he is called Rasacharya. You know what he does in his um, commentary, Beat Bhagavad Gita Bhagavatam, he actually gives the underlying conversation. That could have that would have ensued between the devotee and the Lord, you know, be it Damodar Lila, any any past time. I mean, even Arjuna and Krishna's conversation in Bhagavad Gita, he's telling what are the 
underlying conversations or uh, conversations that are happening in the background which are not being actually listed as verses <laughs> right because the understanding of these rasas are actually very very deep uh, so everything even tribulations imposed upon devotees constitute another exchange of rasa so everything is about rasa between the lord and his devotee right and this is uh, this is anubhava and this is understanding the glory of the lord and this understanding keeps on increasing till devotee is clear in terms of what his own constitutional position is the lord says i put my devotee into difficulty and thus the devotee becomes purified in exchanging transcendental bhava with me so propad is paraphrasing this right he becomes more purified he is already purified he becomes more purified in exchanging transcendental bhava so that what is the transcendental bhava that in spite of the difficulty the devotee still wants to uh, please the lord right and that is the transcendental bhava that is the feeling right um, what happens by that devotee becomes more purified so you know this is uh, we should understand this is also an exchange this is also an exchange of transcendental bhava placing the devotee into material troubles means delivering him from illusory material relations mm -hmm. basically these difficulties troubles for a devotee means getting out of moha a moha could be of anything right moha illusion can be because of the body because of family because of wealth because of position because of whatever and the lord so mercifully actually puts the uh, devotee into different testing situations which seem unnecessary which seem like you know why is this required you know we could have just done without this uh, but be it uh, something connected with material be it something connected even spiritual right there could be tribulations there could be obstacles there could be challenges hmm. but a pure devotee a sincere devotee uh, for a sincere devotee it's just to deliver him from any kind of illusion of this material world the material relations are based on reciprocation of material enjoyment which depends mainly on material resources therefore when material resources are withdrawn by the lord devotee sent person attracted toward the transcendental loving service of the lord simple right whatever was dear to us is taken away hmm. then what will the devotee do he is a devotee because he is a devotee he is not now going and he understands that okay now these resources have been withdrawn i can't get them back like arjuna he realizes saying that okay my power is been taken back by the lord after battle of kurukshetra i am not going to get it back he did not go about fighting for right how do i go what tapasya can i do what shall i do to get my power back no his resources were withdrawn uh, so which means that the devotee should understand okay this means this is an indication that i have to simply send percent engage in the transcendental loving service of the lord it's like that thus meaning by doing that the lord snatches the fallen soul from the mire of material existence he snatches literally like you know like we are stuck as a prey here p r e y prey and krishna just snatches us away by all these tribulations tribulations offered by the lord to his devotee are different from the tribulations resulting from vicious action which means papa karma all these glories of the lord are especially known to the great mahajanas like brahma shiva narada kapila kumara and bhishma as mentioned above and one is able to grasp it by their grace hmm. so this is why you know repeated study of bhagavatam is required because based on our purity based on our actually purity only right hmm. we will be able to enter into these exchanges as propad is calling them here right exchanges hmm. here exchanges right exchange meaning just that reciprocation that relationship that we are rasa hmm? so we have to exchange of humor
right so basically we have to enter into this and so we should understand when we as we keep reading shrimad bhagavatam as we do our chanting as we do our other devotional practices we get purified the more we get purified the more we are able to understand these rasas and uh, the more we get purified by that and parallelly anything that is stumbling block um you know preventing our progress krishna will take them away through tribulations which are also another form of exchange they are just another form of this exchange of love between the lord and the devotee that's all hmm. so this is very i mean these statements are very difficult to uh, digest but we should understand it's just for more purification in exchanging transcendental bhava which means basically we have to become just more purified so that we come out of this illusory material stuff <clears throat> see so interesting you know one verse and ropad is now helping us understand what is the level of these devotees <clears throat> at what level they are and their exchanges with the lord and you know how does what does a pure devotee learn from all this or how we, how he should approach the shravanam of these topics how would, how do we approach understanding the great mahajanas how do we understand how do we approach understanding rajavasis and their love for krishna hmm. it's all about understanding the nitty gritties of those relations like for example uh, when we when you hear about <laughs> krishna's past times in vrindavan uh, like so for example mother yashoda is so overly concerned about krishna's well being so overly concerned and the maharaj and yashoda yashoda more yashoda mata like she's concerned that her son is not eating <laughs> she's just like just like normal mother would be uh, she is calling radharani saying that radharani you come and cook because durvas has said who eats you are cooking will live long hmm. and then she is she is pushing you know roini mata uh, or radharani every cook nice nice the nice you know cook nicely so that my son will like to eat them no i mean this we can just hear as when we read this first i like ah okay what is there i mean we know we, this is there even in the material world mother showing love for krishna love for their sons but when we go into the depths of this rasa we can i mean we can appreciate the deep love that yashoda has towards krishna in completely forgetting that he is the supreme lord and uh, just treating him like uh, you know her son and uh, being concerned about his welfare about uh, you know how much he is eating he's playing too much you know he's walking without shoes this is the exchange of love so if somebody is attracted by all this and then a devotee thing uh, starts hearing more and more about vatsalya prema Mm-hmm. then he develops a better understanding of how devotee reciprocates uh, how lord reciprocates with his devotees in that rasa so it might be the same past time of krishna opening his mouth and showing in the whole you know brahmandas um, but it will be seen by that devotee in a diff- completely different angle in a completely with a completely different perspective so it depends on that is why the level of purification what a devotee is attracted with um, uh, you know the different past times rasas of the lord but these none of these will happen without us actually see okay how does this work uh, one is so there are two types of hearing one has to do one is called structured hearing structured hearing mean like from you know first canto you know one after other one after other <clears throat> and then there is something called occasional hearing occasional hearing happens when 
some you know visiting devotee comes uh for example you know his holy name indradyumna maharaj is coming and this is and this some um, thing about his new book about you know the well forest of vrindavan now this is occasional hearing because we will maybe hear once right once in a while now when we hear this once in a while and whatever is being spoken at that time actually creates an impression on us and either we get attracted by it or we say ah it's okay okay yeah i heard something it's fine yeah nothing it's fine as in whatever it is whatever we experienced in the process of hearing that will happen only if we are hearing with full attention <laughs> but and, and so these things will start registering in devotee's mind somewhere oh, okay okay like this i heard in this class but his study structured shravanam will go on and then these things will become more concrete more clear now okay what is it that is what is what part of bhagavatam for example when i'm reading this whole palkanta of bhagavatam what aspects or what leelas are attracting me and for us to be able to get there we have to read read shrimad bhagavatam multiple times to be able to actually understand where we stand what are we attracted with and it has to be natural you know natural natural means you just hear something and you have to get attracted and propat is saying that this this is the only process by which you know that bhava becomes intensified and becomes rasa mm. so please note i mean we've discussed this before also but whenever we get this opportunity to understand the importance of reading shrimad bhagavatam you know i like to emphasize it because <laughs> and it is so important and structured reading is very very important occasional hearing is beneficial but it cannot be the norm somebody what he was asking me saying that can i just hear lectures from some particular devotee on the internet i said <laughs> it won't be structured hearing for you if it's structured hearing for example a particular devotee you want to hear from has some series look okay, at bhagavad gita series bhagavatam series like and they are structured in a structured manner going through okay you are reading the book alongside your hearing okay that's fine but that cannot replace your structured here reading of shila propas books mm, we should not take the shortcut because see the bhava will not manifest see, if for example if i am speaking my my whatever i say when it comes to bhava etc will be influenced by what i am influenced with right or what my heart is but that doesn't have to be your heart so if you are hearing only from only one type of rasa say suppose somebody is only hearing madhurya 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 rasa uh, they might get uh, superficially influenced by madhurya rasa but maybe it's not their mood maybe it's not their transcendental position maybe it's something else but that will become understood only if there is structured reading right so we should be very wary about replacing structured reading by some form of hearing and generally some form of hearing will be ad hoc little bit here there everywhere oh i saw this topic i felt it's nice i heard it but it is also reinforcing sometimes you know we keep hearing the same things and we keep well we like to hear the same thing again but then that is not the right approach because you're not hearing something else you know before you can conclude that this is what it is that i'm actually attracted by so uh, there's no compromise to nityam bhagavata sevaya we have to read in a structured manner we have to go through bhagavatam in a structured manner and only then we can actually understand this exchanges and we have to go into the depth of this depth of this right for which we will have to read uh, more and more then you know sometimes some pointers will come okay to read some other texts etc etc which will all happen but which is the normal way for making progress so that attraction attachment to hearing uh, reading mm-hmm. is very very important mm-hmm. <clears throat> Yeah. Anyway, I'll stop here. This is an important text.
what is next mm, okay okay so i'll stop here if anybody has any comments questions we can discuss Okay, nothing else means we can stop. Hare Krishna Prabhu.